Okay, so let's talk about the electric field. Now, we could have just as easily done this in the opposite order. We could have defined the electric field first and then electric forces. And honestly, I think that way makes more intuitive sense from a natural standpoint because that's what really happens in the real world. You have a charged particle. It creates an electric field everywhere in space. And then if you were to bring in another charged particle, it feels an electric field because of, or it feels an electric force because of the field that was already there. However, your book does things in the opposite order, so we'll follow along with that for a moment. We know that the electric force between two charged particles is Coulomb's all K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. We are going to define the electric field from the first charge as the force per unit charge. So E is just F divided by Q. So here we only are worried about one charge at a time. We have a charge that will create an electric field at every point in space. K Q, we only have one charge, over R squared. And we'll look at an example in a minute. And then if we have multiple charges, we again, these are vectors, have the principle of superposition. Which is what this says. Okay, so I've got these charges here. And now here's an empty spot in space. There's nothing there. Each one of these charges is going to create an electric field at that point in space. So Q1 down here bends all of space. You've seen those videos trying to illustrate, illustrate gravity where they have like a planet sitting on a trampoline and it looks like it bends that trampoline down. It's not a perfect analogy, but it kind of illustrates how mass warps space around it. Charge does the same thing, just in a different way. So this charge Q1 is bending space all everywhere in the entire universe. If I were to measure how much it bent at this point P, I would calculate that to be the electric field caused by charge 1. That would be KQ1 over this distance squared. In magnitude and that direction would point if this is a positive charge directly away from it. The electric field points away from positive charges and toward negative charges. And if I bring in now Q2 and I set it here then that's going to alter space at this point by creating an electric field vector that points away from it assuming Q2. Everybody's here is positive charges. I'll have an electric field caused by charge 2 at this point that points away from it. Notice that this vector is much bigger than the E1 vector. That's because I'm a lot closer. Our electric field goes like 1 over R squared. If I go twice the distance, I'll get one-fourth the magnitude of the electric field. And then... Oh, I guess I lied a second ago. Q3 and Q5 here are negative charges. So the electric field points toward them. And then the total electric field would be all of these vectors as vectors added up through the principle of superposition. So now what happens, we, we've got all these charges if I put another charge there in that spot, it will interact with that electric field that existed before it even got there and feel an electric force. How much force would it feel? F equals the charge you put there at the spot times the field that already existed at that spot. And F and E are vectors. They point in the same direction in this case or always for electric fields and forces. Okay, so 
Charges create electric fields. Electric fields always point away from positive toward negative charges and drop off like 1 over r squared. So if you go double the distance, you get 1 fourth the magnitude. If you go 3 times the distance, you get 1 ninth the magnitude. And these electric field vectors will be everywhere in space. We've only drawn, I don't know, what is this, about 10 of them here? But there are vectors everywhere in space. Right here, there's a vector pointing away from the charge. And as I go further away, those vectors will get smaller. If I have a negative charge, the vectors will point toward that charge. And the closer I get, the bigger they get. So the electric field is a vector field that permeates all of space. One single point charge sitting alone in an empty universe creates an electric field everywhere in space. And the magnitude of the field a distance r away is kq over r squared. Now, just like, the, like with electric forces, I never ever plug negative charges into this formula. That's absolute value of q there. This only tells me the magnitude. It doesn't tell me direction. q, of course, is charge in coulombs. E here is measured in newtons per coulomb. Okay, so if I just have a single charge here, and just an empty spot in space, there's nothing there. It's just a point in space. That point is going to have associated with it an electric field at the point that points away from a positive charge, would point toward it, the charge, if it were a negative charge, and the length of that vector would be given by this in absolute value. Then if we come in and we place another charge there at point P, if we hold this guy down, we glue it down, he created an electric field there. I bring in another charge and I just set it down there and then I let it go. This is how much force it would feel. That electric field already existed. So the force will be that new charge that I put there times the field that was already there. Okay, let's look at an example. So we've got a couple of charges. They're glued in place right now. They're separated by a distance of five meters. This symbol here is mu. That means times 10 to the negative 6. So this is 2 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs and so forth. Okay, let's find the electric force that Q2 is going to feel being this close to Q1. So we got two different approaches here to calculate this. I could, if I wanted to, Say, okay, forget about Q2 for a minute. Q1 exists in, alone in a universe. That creates an electric field. Let's calculate the field at that location where Q2 is going to be. So just use E equals KQ over R squared. So I'm just interested in just an empty spot here, point P. That's going to create an electric field. That's a positive charge. So that electric field will point away from the charge. And just plugging in, we get 719.2 newtons per coulomb, and it points to the right. That electric field is caused by Q1. Now I place Q2 in that spot. How much force will it feel? F is Q times E. The charge I place there at location P times the electric field that we just calculated. And we get this answer. This answer doesn't tell me direction. I have to look at my picture and go, oh, these are like charges. They're going to repel. Q2 is going to go to the right. If I were to let him go, he would accelerate to the right using F equals MA. 
Okay, or a different approach. We could skip the electric field altogether. Just use Coulomb's law. How much force does Q1 impact or impart on Q2? K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. This is just Coulomb's law. We did this in the last video. Plug and chug, we get exactly the same answer. So the question is whether we want to put this Q2 in at the beginning or at the end. It's the same calculation. This right here, KQ1 over R squared, that's E. Multiplied by the second charge, you get F. It's the same calculation either way. Okay, this is important though, that these formulas only give us the magnitude of the force and the magnitude of the field. We have to look at the picture to determine direction. And we just use opposites attract, or opposites root. Oh, that's obviously wrong there. I will fix that in the file, and I'll re-upload this. You guys have access to this file. This is incorrect. This should say opposites attract likes repel. Okay, and then of course, if Q1 is pushing on Q2, then Q... 2 is pushing back on Q1. This is a third law pair. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. These guys are pushing on each other. So we could just, it's the same formula. We get the same magnitude, but the direction is going to be the opposite. It'll push, Q1 will be pushed to the left. 